Joe James. This video is going to cover the bubble sort. We'll take a detailed look at how the bubble sort algorithm works. Then we'll have a quick uh, look at the big O analysis of the running time and some sample Java code at the very end. So given an array of items, the bubble sort will sort them in increasing order. The items could be integers, strings, whatever. For our example, we'll just use a simple short list of integers. So we have six items in our unsorted list of integers. We're going to number them from 0 to 5. Now the way the bubble sort works, it repeatedly compares adjacent items in the list. And then if the item on the left is larger, it swaps it to the right. So larger items tend to bubble to the right. So this will show you the comparisons of one iteration, right? It's going to compare adjacent items. So in our first comparison in this bubble sort, it's going to compare 5 to 8. If 5 is greater than 8, then we will swap the first two items. 5 is not greater than 8, so no swap occurs. The next comparison compares 8 to 1. If 8 is greater than 1, then we'll swap, which it is. So we're going to swap these two items, move 8 to the right and 1 to the left. And then we'll go to our next comparison. Compare 8 to 6. Is 8 greater than 6? If yes, then swap. It is. So we'll swap these two items. Next comparison compares 8 to 9. 8 is not greater than 9, so there's no swap. Next comparison, 9 to 2. 9 is greater than 2, so we'll swap those two items. So after one iteration, this is what our list looks like. Now if you compare that to the original list, you can see that the larger items work their way to the right, the smaller items work their way to the left, but after one iteration the 2 is still here and the 1 is still here, so the smallest items did not work their way all the way to the left. One thing though is for, for sure is that the largest item does work its way all the way to the right. It bubbles all the way to the right, the largest item in the unsorted part of the list which is 9 here. So let's look at the next iteration. So we'll leave 9 highlighted in gold because it's already been sorted. We're only going to look at items 0 through 4 for the second iteration, which are unsorted. So is 5 greater than 1? If yes, swap. 5 is greater than 1, so it will swap. Is 5 greater than 6? No, it's not. Is 6 greater than 8? No. Is 8 greater than 2? Yes, it is. So we'll swap those two items. That completes our second iteration of the bubble sort. We can see now that the two rightmost items are completely sorted. The rest of the list is only partially sorted. The one has worked its way all the way into the leftmost position, but some of the other items are not in the correct orders. So after two iterations, we have two items on the rightmost end of the list that are completely sorted. Okay, the third iteration, compare 1 to 5. Is 1 greater than 5? No. Is 5 greater than 6? No. Is 6 greater than 2? Yes, it is, so we will swap them. That completes our third iteration. So note that we stop the iterations when we reach the items that we know are already sorted. So now we're half done. We've completed three iterations and we can see that the three rightmost items are completely sorted and the three leftmost items comprise the unsorted part of the list. Next iteration will compare 1 to 5. 1 is not greater than 5. Uh, we'll compare 5 to 2. 5 is greater than 2, so we're going to swap these two items. That completes our fourth iteration and the 5 is now considered sorted. So our last iteration, although we can see the list is completely sorted now, the algorithm doesn't know that. So it's going to do one more iteration to compare the two unsorted items, items it considers unsorted, one and two. And then it realizes, wow, uh, one is not greater than two, so there's no need to do any swapping. And we're done. So the sort is finished. That is our sorted list. 
So let's look at the big O analysis. The bubble sort is not a particularly efficient sorting algorithm because it uses nested loops similar to the insertion sort. So it has big O of n squared running time, which is much slower than some merge sort and some of the other sorts we'll look at. So it's useful only for relatively small data sets. So to code up the bubble sort in Java, we'll use i for an outer loop variable and j for an inner loop variable. And I have, after two iterations, this is what the data set looks like, just to demonstrate how far we want j to go. We really only want j to go 0 through 2 because we're going to compare j and j plus 1, right? So if we want to not have index out of bounds errors in Java, then we'll, we need to just go 0 through 2 and we'll compare item j to j plus 1. Um, so coding it up, uh, we'll have a public method that returns an integer array. And you can see our return down here is the same list that we accepted, an integer array. It's, we, we call it list, the name of our variable. We're returning exactly the same list because this is an in-place sort. So we're returning the same list, but in sorted order. So variables, we're going to use i for our outer loop, j for the inner loop, and a temp variable to do the swaps. Our outer loop is going to run from 0 to the length of the list, minus 1. And the inner loop is going to run from 0 to the length of the list, minus i, minus the number of items that are already sorted which is the number of iterations we've already completed, so i. And then for um, inside the inner loop, we're, each time through we're going to do one comparison. We're going to compare an item to the item on its immediate right. If the item on the left is greater than the item on its right, we swap the two items. And that concludes our video on bubble sort. I hope you'll join us for other videos. I'm Joe James. Thank you for joining.